Hello and welcome back to the Healing Code for Cancer. I'm so glad you're here. This channel is dedicated to giving you the tools and knowledge to take charge of your health. We'll explore ways to detect cancer early, protect yourself from this disease and navigate the path to healing. If you're new to our community, be sure to hit that subscribe button and join us on this journey. In this video, we will explore the importance of cancer screenings when you should get them and why they are crucial for early detection and treatment. These screenings are the unsung heroes of preventative healthcare. They can detect cancer in its earliest stages, often before you even notice any symptoms. We'll cover what these screenings are, why they are so vital, and when you should start incorporating them into your healthcare routine. Stay tuned as we guide you through this essential health journey. We all know someone who has been touched by cancer, and the thought of facing this disease can be daunting. But here's the good news, that early detection is incredibly powerful. When cancer is found early, treatment is often more effective and less invasive. Think of cancer screenings as your early warning system. Imagine a smoke detector going off in your home. It doesn't mean there's a raging fire, but it alerts you to potential danger early on, giving you time to act swiftly and prevent a major disaster. That's precisely what cancer screenings do for your body. They sound the alarm early, allowing for timely intervention and increasing the chances of successful treatment. Different cancers require different tests. Let's break some of these down. Mammograms, proven to reduce breast cancer mortality by 20-40%, especially for women over 40. Colonoscopies, reduce colorectal cancer risk by up to 70% through early detection and removal of polyps. Cervical cancer screenings, Reduce cervical cancer cases in the US by more than 70% since their introduction. PSA tests help monitor prostate cancer risk, particularly crucial for black men who are 2.5 times more likely to die from prostate cancer than white men. Low-dose CT scans recommended for heavy smokers to detect lung cancer early with a 20% reduction in mortality shown in trials. PET scans often used for detecting cancers that have spread such as lymphomas or advanced stage cancers. They're especially effective in staging and monitoring treatment. Brain MRIs used for detecting brain tumors or cancers that have metastasized to the brain. High-risk patients, like those with lung or breast cancer, may benefit from routine brain MRIs. Now, you might be wondering, which screenings do I need? And when should I start? That's where things get personalized. The truth is, there's no one-size-fits-all answer. The best approach to cancer screenings is a tailored one, taking into account your individual risk factors. Factors like your age, gender, family history of cancer, ethnicity and lifestyle choices all play a role in determining which screenings are right for you and when you should start. For example, women typically begin mammograms at age 40, but those with a strong family history of breast cancer might start earlier. So, uh, why do screenings matter? The earlier cancer is found, the better your chances of survival. Here are some staggering facts. Breast cancer has a 99% five-year survival rate if caught early. Without early detection, that rate plummets to 29% in late stages. Colorectal cancer detected early has a survival rate of 90%. Late stage detection, only 14%. Brain MRIs can detect tumors as small as a few millimeters, potentially catching them before symptoms like seizures or vision changes appear. PET scans can reveal metastases in the lymph nodes or organs long before symptoms develop, improving treatment planning significantly. Screenings also help reduce disparities. For example, Hispanic women have the highest rates of cervical cancer, but also the greatest opportunity for prevention through pap smears. Lung cancer mortality is disproportionately high in men, particularly African Americans. Low-dose CT scans and even brain MRIs could make a life-saving difference. The when of screenings, it's all about timing. We've established the what and the why of cancer screenings. 
Now let's tackle the crucial question of when. When it comes to cancer screenings, timing is everything. Think of it like planting a garden. You wouldn't sow seeds in the middle of winter and expect them to thrive, would you? Each type of plant has its optimal planting season and similarly, each type of cancer screening has its recommended starting age and frequency. These recommendations are based on years of research and data, carefully analyzing when screenings are most likely to detect cancer early while minimizing unnecessary tests. While general guidelines provide a helpful framework, it's important to remember that your screening journey is deeply personal. Your individual risk factors, including your family history of cancer, ethnicity, lifestyle choices, and overall health status all come into play when determining the best screening schedule for you. Imagine a map with multiple routes leading to the same destination. Similarly, there might be different screening pathways that are suitable for you depending on your unique circumstances. Breaking down age and gender recommendations. Let's break down some general age and gender-based recommendations for common cancer screenings. For women, mammograms, the cornerstone of breast cancer screening typically begin at age 40 or 30 if you're at high risk due to family history or genetic mutations like BRCA1 slash BRCA2. For both men and women, colonoscopies, the gold standard for colorectal cancer screening, generally begin at age 45. However, African Americans should consider starting earlier as they are 20% more likely to be diagnosed and 40% more likely to die from colorectal cancer. Cervical cancer screenings, or PAP smears, begin at age 21 with HPV tests added at 30 PET scans typically used for individuals already diagnosed or at high risk of metastasis. Your doctor may recommend them earlier based on family history or previous cancer treatment. Brain MRIs, usually reserved for high risk individuals like those with certain genetic conditions or cancers prone to spreading to the brain such as melanoma or lung cancer. Now let's talk about risk factors. If you have a family history of certain cancers, such as breast, ovarian or colon cancer, you might be at increased risk. Similarly, lifestyle factors such as heavy smoking, excessive alcohol consumption and prolonged exposure to UV radiation can also elevate your risk for certain cancers. That's why open and honest communication with your doctor is paramount. Share your family history. Discuss any concerns you might have and don't hesitate to ask questions about your individual risk factors. Your doctor can help you navigate the world of cancer screenings, providing personalized guidance and recommendations tailored to your specific needs. Let's discuss the common barriers to cancer screenings, starting with the elephant in the room, fear. It's perfectly natural to feel a bit anxious about cancer screenings. The unknown can be unsettling. You might worry about receiving bad news or experiencing discomfort during the procedure. But here's the thing. Knowledge is power. And facing your fears head on is the first step towards empowerment. Remember, screenings are designed to detect cancer early when treatment is most effective. Think of it this way. Would you rather know about a potential problem early on when you have more options and a better chance of a positive outcome? Or would you rather wait until symptoms arise, potentially allowing the problem to escalate? No time. In today's fast-paced world, finding time for ourselves can feel like a luxury. We juggle work, family, social commitments, and a never-ending to-do list, but here's the truth. Making time for cancer screenings is not just about adding another item to your schedule. It's about prioritizing your most valuable asset, your health. Think of it as an investment in your future. The time you dedicate to screenings now could potentially save you countless hours, appointments and treatments down the road. The third barrier to screening is cost. I understand that cost can be a significant barrier to healthcare, including cancer screenings. Many individuals and families face financial constraints and the thought of adding medical expenses to their plates can be daunting. 
But here's the good news. Many insurance plans cover the cost of routine cancer screenings, recognizing their importance in preventative care. If you're uninsured or underinsured, don't despair. There are resources available to help you access affordable screenings. Community health centers, nonprofit organizations, and government programs often offer free or low cost screenings to those in need. Don't let financial worries prevent you from taking charge of your health. Remember, cancer screenings are about more than statistics, they are about you. They empower you to take control of your health. With these are your call to action. Research your recommended screenings based on your sex, age and ethnicity. Talk to your doctors about your personal risk factors, including whether advanced tools like PET scans or MRIs are right for you. Mark your calendar and make that appointment. Encourage your friends and family to schedule screenings. Support initiatives for accessible screenings. Thank you for joining me on The Healing Code for Cancer. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon for more life-saving tips. Together we can detect, protect and heal. See you next time.